Hey, welcome to the John Gurdy in a Classroom. Today we have an extremely special guest, Darren Jansen, who joins us from Tennessee. Good morning, Darren. Good morning, John. How you doing? Really good, man. So, Darren, not only are we wearing some uh, all-day running company, Jesse Itzler, which is always nice to be cut from the same cloth of someone who has a passion for running and, and doing what they love, but he just finished the Mid-State Mile about a month ago and coming off a uh, runner-up to Aaron Dana. So, shouts out to Aaron Dana on the championship, I think, after four years. But today's message from Darren is so powerful. Uh, he was living in Canada with his wife and children. And when COVID hit, everything kind of shifted for him. So, Darren, why don't you give a little bit of your background of what you did up until COVID, just a little history. And then we'll move from that point on to tell the listeners how important it was for you to change your life. Totally. Yeah. So I was a, uh, from 2006 to 2011, I was a, a police officer with, uh, we grew up in London, Ontario, Canada, which is two hours from Toronto. And I was a cop there for five years and made the transition. Uh, always been a dream of mine to be a firefighter. So since I was a, a young kid, right? A lot of, a lot of boys. Yeah. Have that why not? Too, so. Heck yeah. yeah. So made the transition uh, into firefighting. Um, at the time we had one, uh, I'm married. So my wife, Christy, we've been married almost 17 years. Uh, and we had one daughter, I uh, got pregnant while I was in uh, fire college uh, training. And uh, yeah, I did that for another 10 years. So another decade, I was a, I was a firefighter. I was on uh, the, the water rescue team. I was, uh, everyone has a specialty. So that was what I did there, um, along with regular firefighting duties, and we had another girl uh, in that time. So I have three daughters right now. They're almost fourteen, almost twelve, and eight. So when COVID hit, though, uh, we had actually looked at taking a leave of absence to travel. We travels big for us. We like exploring, so we had looked to travel. We had looked at taking a leave of absence. COVID hit kind of around the same time. And, uh, and that got delayed. And then we said at some point, forget it, we're going to do it. So we took a leave. Uh, our family took a leave of absence, sold everything we owned in Canada. This was when borders were still, it was a, it was an interesting time. So was this, so we bought, was this 2021? 20, 21. Yeah. And the and spring, so, summer, which, which part of the season was it? Yeah, it was May, May, June in that. So actually that will relate back to mid state. Our plan was to actually travel Canada. We were going to travel all of Western Canada. Hmm. And uh, we had sites booked, we had the RV, we were going out there and then travel got shut down between provinces. Like we couldn't go to the sites that we had booked. Uh, we we're going to go all the way to the West Coast and, uh, and we couldn't make it there with the RV. And so we on the fly were like, we had just seen Jesse and Chad and um, Greg Armstrong running uh, mid-state. That was, would have been 2020. Yeah. And that was a pretty, pretty epic, inspirational effort that Greg put forward um, it was and so that was the year before so that i mean that winter i ran a charity thing with greg to try and like a, a virtual thing to try and raise some money for run for water and greg's become a an, an awesome friend and a bit of a mentor to to me he's like such, such an inspirational amazing guy so from that it was like well okay can we get across the border and if so can we run mid-state so this was like, we were, I remember vividly sitting in my friend Mike's house on the couch, emailing Becca, who I didn't know at the time, being like, this is the story. Can we get in the race? <laughs> so this would have been in, in late April or May that I emailed her. I was like, yeah, you can come. So our plan shifted and we're like, well, let's go to the States and let's see if we can get across the border and let's go run this mid-state race. And so that was that was literally the plan. Like not much else was was planned beside that. We're like, then we're gonna tour the states. As Canadians, we can stay here for six months at a time. So we're like, well, let's take this motor home and our kids and let's go. So kind of the, the adventurous spirit, COVID. I mean, COVID was a weird time. I forget a lot of how much everything was up in the air. Like, when can we do this? And when will this be allowed? Canada's really strict, right? So and we got to Tennessee and everyone's like, COVID's been over for like a year. I was like, that's insane. I was like, this is like, I remember going to restaurants, being able, being allowed to go into restaurants and sitting. And I'm like, this is 
that's wild. Nobody cares. Like it was, it was rad. So anyways, that, that was the, the story of how we, so I ran mid state in 2021. 20, yeah. And, uh, and I got a, so I was like a road, I wasn't even that big of a runner, but I was, I ran my whole life, but never seriously. I'd pick it up and drop off and pick it up and drop off, but always on the road, always very structured and, and timing myself and pace and all that. Never on, not very rarely in, in, on trails and never big hills. Right. So I got, I got an, an awakening there. I was like, this is my buddy, Mike bought me poles. He's like, after eight hours, you can use poles. I'm like, oh, that's great. Greg went is like, that Mike, is that Mike uh, Bellini? No, his name is Mike Rains. So Mike Rains. Okay. Yeah. So he's, uh, so anyways, he bought me poles. And after like four hours, I looked at my wife, Christy. I'm like, I'm done. I'm like, this is terrible. And she's like, Mike bought you trekking poles. You have to go to at least eight hours. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'll see if I can do it. So just so people understand, and I ran in 2022 mid-state, um, and I got through, I think, 43 loops. So it was like 13 hours. Yeah. And I tell you what, if you don't understand the mid-state mile, it is <laughs> it's something else because it's literally a 1.1 mile loop just to give people clarity. And it starts off flat, then it goes high ascent. Up, I don't know. I don't remember the name of the the first hill. Yeah, I always forget I, <laughs> Death Hill or whatever it is. So you yeah. go the first one, go down, and then a little flat, and then it goes back up another one, and then yeah. down. And then you go back to the start. So when you think about not having poles to do this after, I think I think at the time it was or six hours you had no poles and then you were allowed to have poles so your wife told you were you allowed to have poles back in 21 at the at any time or was it after it, like four it was after eight after, after eight hours eight hours like, that's right yeah that's right so that was the same yeah and, format. and i mean for context i mean people who don't run it's like it's 340 feet of of elevation and descent in a mile yeah. and it's like when i when you say that to people i'd be like oh that seems like a lot but if you don't run you don't really but it's like that's a 34 story building so like you're running a mile and in that time climbing the stairs or whatever you want up a 34 story, 34 flights of stairs and back down. And so that gives it some context generally for people to be like, oh, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, it is so, a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, before we go into the, your story of the recent race, I really want to yeah. have um, clarity on. So you, you're in Tennessee, you do the mid-state mile in 2021. And then what does your family do after? Like, hey, wait, before I even get to that, you probably enjoyed the freedom of not having to wear a mask or have all these restrictions from what you had in Canada. So beauty, thank goodness to God for the United States. And not every state's yeah. like that or city, oh, that's true. but, but Tennessee is definitely a great state to have that freedom. So go ahead, continue your story on what happened and transpired from then. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, I'll give the, the Coles notes here. So we, we ended up traveling the U.S., uh, mostly the southern states, um, and then we're at the same time where I'm on this leave of absence from the fire department, and we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. We're like at the time we're actually never sure we're going to go back to Canada. We're like, I don't know. We'll see what happens with the government and all that. Like, it was a very weird time for us as a family and as a country and as Christians. Like, it's like, what are we? What are we doing? Right? So. So we, uh, <laughs> we ended up back in Tennessee. We said to the kids, we we're in Texas at the time. We we're like, where do you guys want to go? And they're like, we want to go home. We're like, where's that? They're like, Tennessee. I was like, okay, we made a lot of friends. Like it was a cool time yeah. in life too, where we at mid state, we met a ton of people in 21. We were having dinner at strangers houses. They were like hearing our story. They're like, come enjoy dinner with us and do laundry at, at our house. We're like, and normally we would always say no, like, that's great. But like we connected with a ton of people, made a ton of good friends, specifically in Tennessee, because the race had the documentary film that year, Chad film. And we yeah. met the we met the filmmakers. So we actually they live in Atlanta. We went and stayed with them multiple times and hung out with them and their kids. And it, it was a really fun experience. And then we're back in Tennessee and we're a couple months into our trip. And it's like we can only stay for another three or four months. How do we stay longer? So we ended up starting a business. We bought a house. And we started a business in the U.S. or an LLC, and started a visa application process. Hmm. Um, and what, so, what was and, the business you guys started? You, you and your for, wife, I assume. 
Yeah, it's for flipping houses, um, okay. real estate related. Basically, I, I did some of that in Canada as well. So we started that business. But uh, a caveat of that business, the way we did it is like we couldn't leave the U.S. If we left the U.S., we'd give up our visa application or give up our visa. So at some point, we're like, well, we actually don't want to be locked into the U.S. either. So we're making all these decisions real time. So we finished that project. We can't head back to Canada just at that time. This would have been uh, 2022, April-ish. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up in uh, Central America, in Nicaragua, for a few months. Uh, we had friends that during COVID, they bought a hotel on the beach in Nicaragua. We're like, let's go check that out, I guess. So we we literally, so we sold everything in Canada, started collecting stuff in the States. In the We were here from uh, like May-ish, no, June-ish, 2021 till April 22. And so we collected stuff when we had a house here again. Uh, and then we sold all the stuff we owned again. And we went to Nicaragua, not sure. It was still COVID in Canada. Canada was still considered COVID. Oh, yeah. Still Lockdown. Still happening oh, yeah. It was, too, right? So we, yeah. so we were in Nicaragua. We're like, I don't know. Maybe we're staying here for a month, three months, a year. Like, I don't know. We'll see. So we went and checked that out. And we didn't, we loved it. And at the same time, the, just the opportunities for the kids were not what we would want. That's a great place to visit, great place to spend some winter months. And for us, it's like, this isn't going to be a home. So in July, uh, all my kids have birthdays in July and stuff in Canada was uh, settling down. So we, mm -hmm. we went back to Canada for July and it was from there that we were able to, same business, same business plan, but apply for a visa outside of the US. So if you apply from, that's just a, I, YouTube gave me a, a, a degree in immigration in, law, in, in, right? Like yeah, that's how I, yeah. So if you apply in the U S it's you you have to stay there and there's certain conditions. If you apply from the outside of the U S you can come and go as long as you're granted your visa, but you can't, you got to wait till your visa is granted. So we applied and then we had to wait. So we lived in kind of rented multiple places in Canada for, from, um, July, July of 22. 22. Yeah. And then to, and then it, you, I mean, you fast forward to we have our application in that summer and then you have to wait to hear back and then you have to wait to have an interview at the the u.s consulate in one of the u.s consulates in canada we would ours was in toronto and so in the meantime we're like well let's go down to the states we still have our times reset so we get another six months we've been out for more than a year let's or like close to a year let's reset let's go back to the u.s and start the some of the business stuff that like let's start getting some of that prepared and so we packed up, we rented an apartment. Um, we went down once, found an apartment, rented it in November. And we're like, we're going to come back January 1 to start. And then we come back to the border and we have a trailer full of stuff. They're like, well, what's your visa? We're like, our interview's in two months, but we're going to come down and start figuring some stuff out and see what happens and whatever. And they said, no, you're not. And so they turned us around at the border. Like we technically like got arrested, like oh. our kid, like it was this whole deal. And like, everyone's crying we like we don't have a place to live at that point so we've like we we're renting in canada that is done and we're going down to the states we have a place rented and we have a u a small u-haul with a few of our things that we've bought to set up an apartment and uh <laughs> we so this was and we're like this darren this was january the beginning of january, january 20, 2023 23 yeah and so right, so let me let me press pause for one second so I'm just wrapping my head around this. Oh yeah, it's been a it's so been a while trip, man. Your whole life you're in Canada. And then you come down to Tennessee in twenty twenty one, run the mid state mile, you're there for a little bit, bouncing around different people's houses. Then you go to Nicaragua that same year. Yeah. Uh twenty two, yeah. Okay. So then Like we started, you started your business. business. You started yeah. business in twenty one. I'm just doing a recap here. Yeah. You started the business twenty one go to Nicaragua early of whatever, 2022, go back to Canada, right? Yep. To get things settled up. And then you eventually decide you're going to move to the States in 23 or back to Tennessee. Yep. And they say, uh, no, you're not. And then yep. you and your family are just stranded there back on the road. <laughs> now, what the heck? So before I even get into what happens next, like, why or... <laughs> Because I'm thinking of my wife's very logical, and this would never happen. So what 
gave you both the free spirit or freedom to say, you know what, let's just, we need a change in our life when COVID happened. What really, what drove you and your wife to really do this adventure to start a whole new life, basically? Yeah. So, so we had, we, we took a long trip to Hawaii and right before COVID, we literally got back in, in February on Valentine's day of 2020 and the whole world shut down a week later, right? Like we flew back right in the nick of time. And we loved our time in Hawaii. We have three, our three girls. Uh, they weren't, they've been in and out of school. We've homeschooled a lot and, uh, and they were in school at the time. And we thought, and then we spent almost a month in Hawaii. It was always been a dream of, of ours to like travel to Hawaii. So we did the thing and, uh, and our kids were thriving together. And we're like, let, like, what does this look like? We get one life to live. What do we want to do? Right? Like where, and so, really, with everything being shut down for so long in Canada, it really gave us some perspective on on anything can change at any moment. And and my wife is very safe and secure. I I have a super high risk tolerance, like unhealthy, unhealthily high. So she is she brings me down quite a bit. But we came to this conclusion that. No decisions permanent, really. Like there are decisions, like our marriage is permanent. That's a thing, right? Like our love for our kids. Like there are certain permanent relationships and things. But as far as like moving, selling jobs, like all those things can change, be be taken away, can take a different form. And I'm just I'm a grinder, right? Like like as I was when I was a cop, when I was a firefighter, I we had rental properties, I was a real estate agent, I worked in construction, I like if I like you like, are, I'll kill it and bring it home and eat it, right? Like if like if there's work to be done, I'm gonna do it. Um, and so for me that and for her, she's seen, you know, almost two decades of that, right? Like since we were dating, she's seen, you know, 20 years of that. And so it's never and she knows that she's that we're I'm gonna look after the family, right? So that so there's a piece of that that's just like I I'm I grew up working hard and hard work is not an issue for me. So if everything goes wrong. You'll rebuild we, it. We'll, that's, we'll still be, hey, that's what I. Well, that's what I hear you. What you're saying, right? I mean, it sounds like to me, Darren, that again, cut from the same cloth. You're a very hard worker. You're a protector, provider for your family. Your wife knew that. She she trusts you, so she has this confidence in you that hey, whatever we need to do together, we're going to be fine because Darren's not just going to go sit on the couch and watch TV all day and, and let us just rot in poverty. Right. So there was this element right there in that that you guys together as a as a whole, as a family, decided like you're right, there aren't nothing is permanent. I mean we're we're all going to pass through this world, but are you actually living your life? Or are you just living in comfort and or in, in the sense of being in Canada at the time of COVID of not just comfort but like restricted freedom. Mm -hmm. and no one wants to live like that so yeah continue so you and your wife decided that you guys are you know wanting to move back to the states um, yeah for good right yeah and so and well it's not even for good our visa's for five years so like everything's okay. still so Up we don't there. have a, a path to a green card or citizenship citizenship we have the ability for me to run the business that we've started in the u.s that's how we can make that's the only way that we can make a living down here gotcha. so so there's um yeah, so there's lots of like there's lots of things that are still up in the air for us, right? Like we are currently um anyway, so we yeah, we got turned around at the border. Luckily, we have lots of friends and we were in the real estate game and um we have really like one of the things one of my mantras that I say when I'm running when things are hard is like I have the best friends. I literally have the best mm -hmm. friends in the world. Uh without a doubt, um it's really cool cuz we can get stressed out over over money and over decisions and over what's the future going to hold. And a friend of mine who's a naturopath doctor once said to me, he's like, when things were stressful, he's like, look at your community, like both here in Tennessee, around the world and in Canada. And it's like, you think that if you're destitute, which you won't be because of what, like how you're built, but if you don't think that everyone's going to look after you, like you're, you're, you're fine. Like, so it, Having people, having the the best, literally the best people and the best friends in my life, I truly believe that is like, well, I can go out and not take unhealthy risks, but I can go out and risk it 
because yeah. I do know because just like for them, what they are to me, I am that to them. Right. I'm like, yeah, if one of my friends needed a, a house, it's like, yeah, come like, come to our place. If you like, we've offered it. Right. It's like, you're having a hard time. Something's wrong. Like there's a spot here. Most people are never going to take you up on it. But anyways, that all that to say, we very quickly within the day had a place to stay. There's a cottage up on Lake Huron, right? Like it's we had an awesome place to stay until we figured it out. And so we had to go through the visa process. And in April 12th of 23, we got approved for our visas. And we actually, this is our risk tolerance. So we, <laughs> we didn't know if we'd get approved for our visa. But my wife found a house online that she loved that needed to be. So we still have the business flipping houses. That's why we're down here. So we do renovation projects. So she found this house and uh, we ended up buying this house before we had our visa interview. So we bought a house in the States to renovate before we even knew if we could come back. That's we a leap just, of faith, like, man. Like, well, it's you... like, and, and, and smart business, right? Like we bought a house yeah. that we knew mm -hmm. that was such a was such a it's the location like we've been in real estate long enough that's like okay even without going down like i can have someone lipstick that thing with me remotely and we can we can break even on it or we can make mm -hmm. a little bit of money like we'll be fine so it's like it's it's high it seems high risk when you like you can tell a story however you want like we bought a house we didn't know if we'd ever you can tell that story and you can also say like we also had our bases covered we like we mm -hmm. knew it would work out eat whatever direction either way went. But Man. we, we kind of, we trusted that, that this was the process. We bought it the week before our interview and it actually helped us in our interview. Cause we were able to say like, this is a project that we have a, a, a deal on that we're, this is the next thing that our business, cause we can still operate the business without being here. Right. Like yeah. We have a U.S. LLC. I mean, you can own a company yeah. in the U S and, and not live in the U S and operate and make money in the U S it's, 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 it's the, it's the hmm. having the business that lets you live here. Right. So. Anyway, so we have a five-year visa. We're a year into that, and it's renewable. So as long as the business is active and making money, there shouldn't be an issue with us renewing it. But we still, five years at a time is like, and then our, our kids age out, right? So my oldest is going to be 14. So right at, at 18 and 21 are certain ages where there's requirements where like we might have to make a transition because our kids might not be able to stay under our visa. They might have to figure out a school visa, a work visa. Like we don't know. So there's always for us to live here is very, it's very fluid life as far as what, where are we going to be in three to five? Right. And we hold, we've learned to hold things with an open hand, both yeah. opportunities and physical things. And like, it, no, we don't know. We don't get we don't get to know the end of the story. We get to see as far as the headlights reach at in that moment, sort of thing. No, I think what I love about it, just listening to your story right now is that um, you, you I, we call it calculated risk. So what you and your wife have done is you take calculated risks where you're not living for again comfort or just familiarity of just saying, hey, um, you know, this is our life. This is what we've done. This is what we're gonna do. But knowing you as a grinder, hard worker, a cop, a firefighter, you know, doing construction, flipping houses, like you're jack of all trades. And it allowed you to have this flexibility or adaptability to go do things that your heart desires and your wife and your family. So getting to 2023, you move into this property that you're going to flip and it becomes your house. So let's start right there because I want to move along this journey because I want to then go from where this is very important because it tells the story um, of your life, but then we're going to go into your personal transformation and then the mid state mile. So go ahead, go to where you're in the new house or you're flipping it while you're living in it. And then yeah. go, and then if I'm correct, and before we start this interview, we were talking about how during this period is where you really have your physical transformation. So if you can, Darren, do the best you can of blending maybe those two together. Like you're literally flipping your house in Tennessee, but you're also flipping your mind and your body at the same time. Yeah. So, I'll, I mean, I'll give some credit. So when we, when, we left, when we left Canada or when we were back in Canada for that season, I took a course called uh, Enlifted with Mark England. I took, me and my wife took it together. It's a, it's a mindset program. It really has to do with words and stories and the, the, the stories we tell ourselves to ourselves about ourselves, right? That's my definition. That's Mark's definition of mindset. And so we were working on 
our mindset this whole time. And, and I'm into health and fitness and all. I've, I've been into that for a long time. But I've never taken it to like a, very, a real serious level, been super disciplined for a long period of time, ups and downs, right? And so we're living in this house. We're still living in it, actually, still renovating it um, because it's an awesome property. So we're, we have that ability to rent it from ourselves sort of thing, right? Mm-hmm. When we, it's the, the real estate game. And, um, and so during this time, I'm about to turn 40, right? So I'm getting older. And I have this goal. So last year I ran mid state and I hired a coach, Justin Hamilton won it 22. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. so I hired Justin and I'm like, if five weeks, I'm like, can you train me to run? So the year one, I ran 30 miles. I ran nine hours in 21. Mm -hmm. Didn't run in 22. We were in Nicaragua. 23, I ran mid state and I ran uh, longer than I ever thought possible. I wanted to win. I had five weeks of training. I had some good buildup previous to that but five specific training weeks and uh and i did really well and and i did went further than i ever thought i could go and um that that following that was kind of that was a big catalyst for me like evidence of being able to do something i didn't think i could do so yeah i went so 20 23 i did 112 miles when the previous year to two years you did 30. That's huge growth. I did 30. Right. So like it it was, it was an incredible, and that's, and just so everyone knows, like, and if you ever run that race, like at seven hours, again, I looked at my wife, I was like, I'm done. And she's like, no, you're not. And she's, she's incredible. Like your crew is so important there and all like so much credit to her. And Justin was there. Justin came and, and helped crew that year. Uh, he had a bunch of athletes running and then, uh, I was the last of his athletes left and him and Steph were awesome, just incredible people. And, uh, and it, something unlocked that year where I was like, we are capable of more than we think. And so that led in really that year led into, I was training up to mid state that year. And that year led into just a physical transform. Like my mind was being formed and transformed into, into like what's possible and the discipline required. And then, uh, and then I also hired a health and fitness coach, an online coach. I don't know enough about diet. I thought I did, but I really, I didn't know enough about diet to move the needle in any specific direction. So I, I had a three month, uh, stint with a coach who it's like, I mean, the, this is the secret. Cause I give it all away for free. And if people want to work with me, then, then that's a more intense thing. But it's like, it's like lit really the, the, the tenants are like high protein. If you want to lose fat, we're going to manipulate calories. And it's going to be low calorie, high protein, lift three days a week and do some cardio. Like that's it. Like it, this, it's so simple. It's just very hard to do on your own, I find. And I couldn't do it on my own. So I hired a coach and I dropped, uh, I went from like 20% body fat down to like eight in three months. Right. Wow. It's like, it's not, and now I'm back up. I'm, I'm, but, and so one of the things was for 2024 mid state, it was like, I ran 23 heavy. I was not, I probably had that 20, 23% body fat, something like that. And, and I was like, what if I was light and had low, bo-? like, so it's just this idea of how can I manipulate my body with my training and with what I'm eating to have a better performance? I'm not an elite athlete by any standards, but for my race that in my goals, can I make myself even, even better? Right. And yeah. so then it's just been the last year and a half has just been this journey of like, how do I, and and this is just a tool that I have. And then it's like, oh, that's, it's simple. I'm good at it. And I love to coach. And it's like, this is something that I want to do because I want to see other people win and succeed. I think everyone should have that feeling of going further than they thought possible. Well, let's, let's start right there, actually. So this is from my own experience and it's kind of goes perfectly with yours. If you want to become a pro or at least an above average to an elite athlete or whatever that field is, Yep. You need a coach. You need a coach. I will tell you that firsthand. I, I'm working with a coach right now. His name's um, Aaron. Yeah, goes by the Fit Beard on social oh, media. Yeah, I've 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 it, met him. He was I'm a part of um, uh, Apogee, like uh, Matt Boudreau and Tim Kennedy's Bo- thing. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. he, um, what's his last name? Um, uh, uh, Alan Hon- Alan Hondrino. 
Oh yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. I, he was one of the speakers one week. Yeah. I, I, I didn't connect with him, but I, I had a zoom call, his group zoom call with him. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah. So what, what's so important though, is that for everyone to understand this is I think people are afraid a little bit to have a coach or to spend some money. But my, what he told me is this, he goes, you can either take the bus and have all these stops to get to your destination or you can have the an Uber and a Tesla and you get there so much faster to where you need to go. So Darren had Justin Hamilton who won mid state when I was there in twenty twenty two as your coach mm-hmm. for mid state and running. And then you you hired a fitness I'm sorry, a nutrition coach um after that race in twenty three. And what happened was and you, you can you're just hearing Darren say this so eloquently, is that he became an expert from people who have an expertise in their field. And when someone's a pro in their field and you learn from them, success leaves clues. But what happens is you're not just getting it off of YouTube or social media. You're getting it directly from, the, like they say, the horse's mouth, right? Like you're right there in the trough. Yep. And for you, Darren, to make those educated decisions to say, this is what I want. And if I'm going to win the mid state, I need to do these things. And you're very tactical about how you wanted to go out and do that. And what would you offer to somebody who was maybe someone who's maybe overweight, someone who um, wants to run a race, someone who wants to just do some adventure in their life? They're just stagnant sitting on the couch eating potato chips and they're 40 years old and they're like, man, I'm, I'm just wasting away. What would, what would be your best advice for them? So I would, I would say a couple of things. One would be um, give yourself a long runway, meaning like I was able to do mid-state because I've been a runner for 30 years, like on and off. But I, ran, I was running cross country in middle school, like I, and I never really stopped here and there I did. So like I was able to do something like mid-state because I just have 30 years of, of endurance in that. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's been built up over a long time. So give yourself a, a long runway to to accomplish a big goal. But then the second thing is like it actually doesn't take that long. Like we can treat our bodies like garbage for 20, 30, 40 years and it will bounce back if you give it the right inputs in in 3 months, 6 months, right? And so being a, being a coach and saying everyone should hire a coach, I get how that sounds. Um but I truly believe that if you have a specific goal, like don't hire a coach just to hire a coach, hire the right coach for the goal that you have. If you want to make it, like you said, if you want to take the fast route, like I'm now learning more and more about a different business that I have no experience in. And it's like, I hired a coach that knows that industry so that instead of it taking me five years to get to where I'm trying to get to, it's going to take me a year and a half. Right. And so Did you, Aaron, Darren, uh, did you hire a coach for learning how to coach? Yeah. Okay. Do you mind saying their name? If... Uh, sorry, I've hired a couple of coaches. They're not okay. all. So I've, I've gone through a couple of coaches. Um, mm-hmm. So I will, I will leave that as, as what it is. I got for, you. Just for right yeah. now. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so I, I can, uh, we'll talk offline, offline about, about that experience because there are, I also learned there are like hire the, that's why I say hire the right coach. Like, I've yeah. hired. So in the last three years, while I haven't had the security of the job that I've had, like my wife and I have hired multiple coaches and multiple, I mean, spent lots of money. It doesn't matter. It doesn't actually matter how much money you spend because I learned spending more money doesn't necessarily get you a better coach. Oftentimes when they're at that level and you're not ready for that, it's not the right fit. And so I, we spent quite a bit of money on a coach that wasn't the right fit. That's, that's learning okay. too, right? Like, yeah, that's yeah. your tuition. So, I mean, and and not to get caught up on you know, hire coach, hire coach. It's just you can learn everything. The, the my whole thing is people aren't aren't starving for knowledge. Go to YouTube. Like, you are inundated. You are we are drowning in information, mm-hmm. and so it's like fu- like what most people need is someone who who is there both their like is going to give him a kick in the pants, but is their cheerleader. Most people who are trying, especially weight loss stuff and losing fat, most people need, they don't need to know what to do. They need to know that someone's on their team and is going to support them, 
right? It, it's not, so my program is not like there is information and I, and there's lots of information I can give you. That's why I said what the three things are, right? It's like lift weights, high protein, lower calorie, and a little bit cardio. Like that's it. So you can take all that and you can do it on your own. There's no problem. But most people, myself included, is like, I just, I need it more personalized for me. And I just need to know that I'm doing the right thing. And I need that weekly or that, you know, multiple times a week check-in. I need to send, I need to send some one of my meals to show a picture that, hey, I'm eating the right thing. And someone says, good job. Like, like it or not, we are not all David Goggins where we're just self-motivated all the time to do the right thing. Right? Like a lot of times it's like, no, I would like some encouragement. I would like someone to tell me that I doing and to know that the steps that I'm taking are going to lead to the result that I want. So I'm not spinning my wheels. So I'm not feeling hungry sometimes and being like, it's not worth it. I'm going to eat a donut because I'm feeling emotional right now. Right? Like most of the weight loss stuff that we deal with now because of the food we have, it's so emotionally, it's so tied to emotions that if you, it is so so much of my coaching is based on like, it is, I will program your nutrition and I'll program your workouts. The work that I do is the mindset stuff. It's like, why do you do that though? Like we can go all day and you can, anyone can do a program for three months and say like, and get three, six months in and lose 10 to 15% of their body fat. Like if they start at 28%, you can lose 10 to 15% of your body fat in three to six months. No problem. If you're like within a reasonable weight range. Right. And then it's like, you can do that. And then what do we just slide back into the, cause we accomplished the goal. Like how, how is it sustainable? And so much of it is just in here. And that's why we do the endurance stuff is because it forces something. There's something clicks in here. And that's why I do that. But it's just like, there are different ways. You don't have to go run hundred mile races to unlock some of that mindset, but you do have, I believe most people have to do the hard work because every, all coaches will post their transformations, but it's like, Oh yeah, that was four years ago. What does the guy look like? Like, I I don't know. Does this last? Right. I, I call it, um, as a coach and I've been coaching for 20 years. Um, it's all about consistent character. Yeah. So the authenticity of who you are and your character will resonate with your clients or students that I, that I coach or young adults. So they respect you if you're actually living it out and not say, do what I say, not what I do. So the other thing too, what I heard you say is, um, what's very important is having a coach and this is not about coaching, but I think it's very important for people to understand is that if you've ever seen the Rocky movies, I don't know if you've seen any of them, but you have Mick in the corner. Yep. And if it wasn't for Mick, there is no Rocky. People have to understand this. So without a coach in your corner, you cannot become that pro or that person that you envision yourself to be to live a legacy life. And I think I've learned that um, just through my journey of coaching. And the crazy part is, this is where I'm going to get to right now, ready? The crazy part is, and you probably have learned this too, is that you have all this information, you offer yourself freely to them, your clients, and then they just don't meet you halfway. They slip back in their old habits and it's all the mindset because they have a negative self-talk or belief system about who they are and they can't get over that hump. Some of them, hopefully many of them do, they can't get over that hump of envisioning who they are going to be and release that old belief system that they're a fat, lazy, this is how I've always been kind of person. So you have any strategies on on making that click for somebody to say, hey, let's shift your mindset from that old you to the new you? So yeah, so I mean, first, the first thing I'd say is what you're talking about, what I hear you saying is it's the victim mentality, right? we are the victim in our own story of the negative actions of someone else, basically, right? Like when we tell the story of someone, like if we're addicted to when we get to the office, it's like, you wouldn't believe this guy cut me off. And like that guy's at his job. He doesn't even know he cut you off. And here you are telling a story about someone who cut you off and you almost crashed and none of it matters. Like none of it's forward thinking. So it's like, first of all, how do we recognize that? Do we have a victim mentality? Are we the victim of the negative actions of others? in our own stories. Right. And so that, that's, that's piece number one for me is like, you have to recognize that is, is, is that true for you or not? And then there's, 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 I mean, I play game where I call them language games or word games with my clients. So like one is soft talk. If you say words, like I think might maybe possibly should kind of sort of 
non-committal words, if that's big in your vocabulary, that's something to recognize. Going from, I think I might go to the gym later to like, I'm going to the gym at 4 p.m. Soft talk, which is think might maybe to solid talk, which is just removing that and making a clear goal, right? So if, if you're thinking, if I have enough energy later, I might go to the gym as opposed to I, I'm setting a plan and I'm, and I'm taking action on my life and, and this is what I'm going to do. That's not like David Goggins. I get caught mm-hmm. up on David Goggins because I think no, he's I, very- I, David Goggins reading his book in 2019, Can't Hurt Me, yeah. was my awakening. And I think sometimes people need a kick in the butt to just have that alarm go off in their head and saying like, I'm done living this lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I want something new because I want to be better. And, and I think the one thing too, Darren, I, I know you're going to say this or get to it is if you don't have a strong enough why you're doing it, right. then you can forget about all the coaching, training, best plans, doesn't matter. It has to be a very strong why for you to get to where you want to go or else just forget about it. Keep going. It's great stuff, man. I like the, I like the uh, soft talk to the solid talk. That's yeah. good. And, and so then I'll play like, so a lot of my coaching has to actually do with figuring out a why, right? And then we'll play, we'll, we'll, this is how we work. So we'll work on mindset right now. We'll play a game. I'll play a language game with you. Um, so this is called the should detox. So I'm going to, so we're going to start with a stem sentence and it goes, I should, and mm-hmm. you finish that statement however you want. What should you, John, do? Could be anything. You want me to go ahead and finish that? Yeah. Say I should and finish it. I, I should have run this morning. <laughs> okay. I should have run this morning. Okay. Sorry. And don't do should have. Uh, don't do should have. Oh, should have. Do just should. I should something that you should do. Like I should okay. run. I should run. Yeah, is I fine. should run. Mm-hmm. Okay. I should, I should run. Okay. How does that feel to say? Just uh, to me, it's just complacent. Like I, and, that, and not a negative connotation to me. Negative. Okay. On, um, and so this is an interesting part where people, some people find this weird. I've been doing this for so long that it's not weird to me anymore. When you say it's a negative connotation, so like it might be he- like a heavy feeling or obligation. Would that be accurate? Yeah. Yeah. That's accurate. Okay. Do you feel that feeling anywhere in your body? Physically. In my legs right now. Yeah. yeah okay. That's mm-hmm. interesting. Okay. So I should run. Okay. Chain, take out the should and, and replace it with could and say the whole sentence. I could run. I could run. Right. So you said you had an inflection in a different point in, in your at, at the end. Like it yeah. went up, mm-hmm. right? You smile a little bit. I could run. Is there any difference from should to could? Does it feel any different? Well, the, the words no, but how I felt, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now, now we're going to go from I could to I can. Say I can run. I can run. Right. Different? I can't. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can run. Like, I know I can, and I right. will. See, that's the thing. I will run later today. <laughs> that's, right. what the, that's the difference in what I've learned is I may have missed because we had this interview this morning, and I, I have things I, I set up to make sure this is, a, this is right. It's done well. So I played the game of timetable where I know I will run later today. Right. Because I have a discipline. And I have a 20 mile dis, uh, standard per week that it gets done. And guess what? When I get those small wins there in each week, I feel great because uh-huh. I know I'm, I'm committed to what I say I'm going to do. So I know I'm, I'm, I'm going a little further than the game you're playing. But no, but, but that's the point. And, but the point is when we, when we go back to how do, you, how do you create a why and then how do you affect someone's mindset? The person who talks to you the most is yourself. Yeah, no one absolutely. talks to you more than you. So when, when you should all over yourself, right? Like play on words, but when you are like, oh, I should, man, I should go get the, the brakes done on the car. I should really run. I should, I should play with the kids more. I should spend more intentional time with my wife. When we have this going on in our head constantly and we're constantly berating ourselves with I should, it's, it's such an ob, ob, obligation language, right? And it has no joy to it. And it has, it's just heavy. When you go to I can, I can, like, it creates opportunity, right? I can play with my kids. I can get the brakes done on my car because I have a car and other people don't, right? Like, I agree 100% um, with you. I, I know that it is a shift in mindset and in self-talk because 
I think, I think most people, I'd say majority of people probably say a thousand things a day negative to themselves subconsciously or, or consciously just, you're right. Should have, could have, whatever would have to, I get to, and a get to is a gratitude. That's what I've learned. And I, I learned this from taking the trash out every Monday as I used to get mad like five, 45 years ago, every Monday I'd come home from a full day work, coaching, teaching, and then I would get mad at my kids for not helping or whatever the case. And then I finally one day told myself, what are you getting mad about? Like there's, there's people who have nothing. You get to take the trash out that you've consumed for the past week. So why are you getting mad? You control your emotions. So once I shifted from the, the anger, the emotion of having to do the trash to I get to, my whole life has changed. And it's the beginning of each week of how the course goes on. Well, you're, you're an explorer, and I'll, I'll end here because it's been so grateful to have you on today. Is yeah, I think everyone, if I was to recap very quickly on you, Darren, is just you have such a good heart. You are grateful. You adapt well. You're a hard worker. You know, you're committed. You love community. Uh, community has helped you in your life, especially recently, the past couple of years. You're a great father husband and you're just a competitor but uh but you're you're doing the competitiveness to get to the next levels of your life and just listening to you i think everyone should hear and it should all resonate with everybody that this is an individual who just wants to sharpen his blade every day he wants to explore new territories of his body his environment and his mind and when you do that you're you're going to grow and failure is part of the process so, Darren, what you have shared today is just nothing but a, a master class of how to live your life to the fullest. And as your words, you would say, like, to live a legacy life. And if we're not striving to do that each day, uh, we need to definitely reflect and reset how we live our lives. And you're definitely living your life to the fullest. And I'm just so proud of you doing it, man. I'm blessed to get to, to know you more. And the, the great thing about podcasting is these things live on YouTube and Spotify and Apple forever. So I just hope that people, that one person, I do this because I want to affect that one person to say, you know what, it was because of Darren today that, that changed their life. And it could be in five, 10 years, who knows? That's the crazy part. That's the crazy part. So I'll just end it. And for everyone, I will put everything to contact Darren, his website, his social media. Um, following in the show notes. It's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. And Darren, I wish you the best of luck in not only your future races, but the continued transformation process that you, you have each and every day. All right, everyone. This class is dismissed. <laughs>